Well, hello and welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair, and we are finally on the air. Oh, my goodness. If you're watching this on YouTube, never mind. You know, there's no finally on the air in YouTube. But the, for those folks that are watching live, thank you for being patient. And we're, we got all new hardware today. Well, not all new, but mostly new. And, you know, does it take an hour? Does it take three hours? Does it take a half a day to make things work? Well, you don't know. And <laughs> until you're done <laughs> and then you realize yeah it took a lot longer than you inspected and uh, and the jury rigged setup that i've got here is is it's just it it's a ton of fun what can i say I, I i'd lie to tell you if it was if it was a pain in the butt it's really not it's been a lot of fun what we're doing today and uh, by the way this is streaming idiots um, thank you for, for tuning in. I, I guess I better do the official. I'm so excited about what we're doing. I just want to jump right into it, but I got to be patient. Like the kid in the candy store, you got you to wait until you pay for the candy. So, uh, you know, full disclosure, um, I'm an authorized, authorized, is that the right word? A licensed, authorized, well, anyway, I'm a reseller for Vidblaster and Vmix and Magewell and and a bunch of other stuff, and you can find it in our store at easternshorebroadcasting.com. And I appreciate the folks that, uh, that that came in last week when we gave you the special code and bought stuff. And, and we've had uh, a great, great opening week in, in the store, and I appreciate that. And that's going to allow us to do all sorts of other fun stuff like this as we can bring in products that uh, we normally wouldn't be able to bring in that are that are fun to play with. And hopefully we'll be you know part of the studio here in, in the future. Um, I am conscious of the fact that not everybody has a huge budget, and so we're going to continue to sort of blend, you know, mid, mid range to low range to high range stuff so that there's a little bit for everybody here. And one of the things that we're adding to the store, it's not quite done yet, but is a uh, sort of a starter kit. Um, what does it take if you want to prove to your organization, your church or your sports team, or your school or whatever, that this streaming stuff really is pretty cool and that people will enjoy it and watch. You can, that is, you, you get viewers. Well, we're going to have a starter kit that will be priced at less than $100 that will give you the basics of what you need to get going. Now, you're going to have to purloin some of this stuff yourself. You're going to have to go find an old PC somewhere and an old a handy cam somewhere and 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 we'll give you the other pieces to make it work and it, it, it'll be a lot of fun so we'll be in, introducing that in the next couple of weeks less than 100 bucks and and you can get going and and a lot of what it is is not product so much as process it's the process that makes this stuff make this stuff work i get emails from folks all the time they've got the product they just don't have the process they can't uh, what was it uh, we was chatting with somebody on a forum the other day and they were just totally confused as to to what direction the audio and the video were traveling and so we want to try to come come back to basics and, and help folks get started on that and so that would be the starter kit um, let's see so we got that we got the full disclosure stuff out of the way and and uh, if, if you've got questions and you think I can help shoot me an email Tom at, at uh, easternshorebroadcasting.com or go to the website there's a contact form there if you'd rather use a contact form we can do that but the idea behind this show the basic concept behind this show is that one guy with one PC or one laptop <laughs> can really do a good broadcast and so we're coming to you today and let's uh, Let's go to some of the fun stuff here. We're just going to cut straight to the chase. Um, this is a, um, an Asus uh, ROG, Republic of Gamers, uh, laptop. I got it. Um, where did I get that? I don't remember. Did I get it on eBay or Amazon or someplace? Anyway, it was a refurb. You know me. I'm a cheapskate. It was a refurb. And so I was able to uh, pick it up for, you know, probably, I don't know, 75 cents on the dollar, something like that. I think it was about $1,200. So it was, it, it, you know, it was twice as much as what you could spend for a laptop that would be uh, serviceable. But the key to this little laptop is this little thingy right here, which is the Thunderbolt port, which allows this guy to communicate with all sorts of stuff, really high speed. Now... 
unfortunately right out of sight off the end of the desk here and you can almost see it right there that little silver box is the um, is is the the box that we built that has the um, that that has the four port HDMI capability so it's and we're, we're gonna market this thing so obviously you know if, if you're a tech guy you know exactly what I'm talking about but but basically it's it's a box with uh, with capture abilities and we're going to bundle it with vmix so it's kind of all one package i'm pretty excited about this and so today we've actually got four um four hdmi 1080p cameras coming in um, we've got the the good old uh, ptz um, 12x uh, ptz cam um, it's ptz optics excuse me ptc optics uh, 12x uh, ptz cam which is is really great let's see let's go ahead and do make a preset at this current position and and we can we can make it come all sorts of different places oh there's a good shot of my microphone for example um but let's go back over to the end of the desk uh we've got uh over here uh to my right a just a, a common canon hf uh, r100 handy cam i think i actually bought it you know years and years ago to do pictures with the family, do video with the family, and put it aside and then later picked it back up. Over here to my, my left is a, um, a Canon uh, HF-R200 that we bought, um, that I bought off of eBay just because I wanted to have another camera in the studio. And then of course my main cam right here, which is, ta-da, a Canon HF-R100 you can get them on eBay for a hundred bucks. I mean, this this is this is the bomb stuff here. Um, and is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. But for a hundred bucks, <laughs> you know, it's pretty darn good. It's pretty darn good, especially for the purposes here today. Um, let's see. Uh, so we've got that, that, and that. Um, I'm going to give you a quick peek as to what we've got in the box it's yes of course it's the new magewell pro capture hdmi card and it, it it's sweet and that's probably the noise you hear in the background is that little fan that little guy is is pretty uh, pretty loud um so let's go back to a good shot right here yeah there we go um in order to make all this stuff work what we had to do was um, it wasn't just enough to hook up to the video because you know any good show is not just video. A good show is going to include audio. And so we've got basically audio in and audio, oh, excuse me, audio in and audio out. And it's going to my mixer over here. And so we had to do all sorts of configurations to get everything set and cables to. to to be around it, it was it's a lot more difficult than you think. For example, uh, for those of you that were watching today um, and waiting patiently for the show to start, what you were waiting for was for me to find a pigtail where I could take a 3.5 millimeter stereo uh, jack that's coming out of the PC with audio and putting it into, um, what is that, the, the uh, 3 8 inch, um, quarter inch um, telephone jack in the mixer, but I wanted stereo, so I've got two quarter inchers with <laughs> RCA adapters with um, an RCA gender changer to an RCA splitter that goes to a 3.5 millimeter um, male, and I had to find a female uh, extension cord, um, which fortunately I, I have, I think, one of everything. The question is being able to find it. Um, so it was just, it was actually, it was the audio that, that took a lot of time. The other thing is today, we're actually um, we're, we're we're back to sort of a combo setting. Um, we're we're streaming with vMix on the laptop. Now the laptop is a 2.5 gigahertz, so um, 
generally what I'm streaming for my production mach machine is, is overclocked to 4.2. So I've lost about, uh, you know, what is that, 1.7. Um, so I've lost a third of my my, giga, my gigahertz is, um, in order to do this. And so we were doing some configuring before, uh, during pre-show, and folks were having trouble with buffering. And so we had to sort of cut things back and stream and, um, and, and I won't say crop and edit, but it's essentially, you know, going in and reconfiguring and, and, and doing things with frame rate and resolution and things like that. We're also using, um, we're using VidBlaster on the side. Uh, let's see, do I have a shot that might show that? Yeah, here we go. Um, right over here is, uh, is VidBlaster and VidBlaster is taking a stream um, taking the what's what what, what vmix calls the external output uh, for vidblaster it just it looks like a, a camera and we go to the camera module in vidblaster and pick up the vmix video um, which is the name of that that output in vmix that vidblaster thinks is a camera and so um, and you can see the big big screen part of it right at here at the top and then the two small modules at the bottom are the camera module and a recorder module. So we're actually going to record this show with VidBlaster because I was having some difficulty getting um, vMix to cooperate on the recording. I think it's the fact that um, I think it's the fact that it it has less gigahertzes to play with that vMix is objecting to. And so the, the, the format that I was using from last week's show on my production machine, it did not like today. So we're going to have to go in and play around some more with vMix to get it to... I mean, basically vMix and VidBlaster are using the same encoding engine, the, the FFmpeg. So it's just a matter of uh, getting a, a good combination of settings for vMix. I was talking with somebody this morning, and... Um, you know, it was just a matter of settings. Did, did they have everything set right? And anytime you have a setting that's not right, it's trouble. It's, it, it's, the, the hardware may be plug and play, but the software is punch and play. Uh, anyway, so let's see. Um, trying to catch up with the guys in chat. Somebody says that I have too much bass. Well, we could turn that bass down. We sure can. There we go. And he says he's hearing a noisy fan. Well, that's for sure. That's for sure. Yep. The uh, the uh, Thunderbolt box off the edge of the table has got a built-in fan, and then the, the Magewell card has a built-in fan, so I didn't have a... Thunderbolt cable long enough to put it over into uh, the closet. You can see the closet over here to my right. Um, that is where my production machine lives, and so that's where we are able to sort of trap all of the audio or all of the noise that that fan makes, and I didn't have a cable long enough to put that box in there, but that would be the plan. Um, do we have a good shot of the floor? Can we show the floor? Anybody want to see the floor? This is, uh, you can almost see the floor. Let me see if we can zoom back out. Yeah, see that, that giant snake thing right there? Going into the closet? That's like 20 cables. Um, USB, audio, monitors, most of them are USB, but you figure, you know, two or three monitor cables, because I'm always swapping out different monitors here, um, two or three different audio cables, or excuse me, probably more than that, um, because we, we do a lot of configuration. So it's nice to have the cables already there and available. Um, just a lot of, and then the, the, the sort of rat's nest of cables right here is everything that we, we unplugged and pulled out of the snake in order to get into the, uh, the streaming box. Um, so that was uh, 
quite a challenge today, and you can see all the other paraphernalia that's just gotten thrown aside in order to try to get things back to uh, the point where we could actually put in a broadcast. Uh, but it's it's been a it's been a good learning opportunity for me to go to a smaller um, piece of equipment because now I have to be more efficient at what I do. I can't be so lazy. Now, I have been lazy in a little bit in that I've, I've just taken a VGA out of this laptop over to, to a nearby monitor. And I'm thinking, yeah, this, this uh, the laptop has HDMI out also. So we could feed two monitors plus the main screen um, or we could feed a second monitor and then we could feed know a projector or a scoreboard or something like that so there's a lot of um, a lot of uh, flexibility here what there isn't here right now is there isn't a ton of CPU so if you want to do high-end high-def stuff you're probably going to hit the ceiling now what I want to dial this guy in for is to see if we can get four channels of, uh, of, of 1080p in there recorded and streamed and also use instant replay. And I'm beginning to think that may be asking a little too much. We may not be able to do four cameras like that. But we'll be, we'll be testing it some more over the weeks and months to come and just trying to see what the limitations are. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's funny to think in some ways, you know, here I am trying to take a laptop and make it do what a 53-foot tractor trailer filled with broadcast equipment does every week for ESPN and, and CBS and NBC and ABC. Can it be done? How small can you go? How, what, what, what is the limit that we can get to? Now, if I had two Thunderbolt ports on this guy, if, if there was some way to have two Thunderbolt bolt buses or connections to the motherboard, and one could have a solid straight hard drive in it, and one could have this four port uh, capture device -y thing, then we might be able to pull it all off. One of the, one of the, one of the ways that I think I'm going to hit my, my head on the ceiling is not having enough uh, disk access to record four channels of high definition video for instant replay. We might be forced to go back to just one channel. But even that one channel on a laptop is still not, not too shabby. Um, what purposes would this kind of setup have? Well, obviously sports because of the portability of it. But I'm also thinking of a, uh, an event environment where security might be a little bit of a concern, so you can't leave your anything that's not bolted down, you can't leave there. So having a laptop like this where I've got, you know, two, four, I've got six plugs in it, one of which is power, one is a second monitor, two are, uh, one is USB, one's firewire, two are, two are audio. Um, so I unplug six ports and six connections and I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm out the door. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, that makes the assumption that the, that the cameras are secure, that the, 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 the video box is secure, and that the audio is secure. But so far as the PC, I can take that anywhere I want. So I can use it on Sunday in church, I can use it on Monday for football. Um, and I think, I, actually I think between the capture box and the laptop, throw in a couple of cameras, you could put it all in one backpack with the cables, carry a couple tripods under each arm, and make one trip to the press box and do a two camera, two camera shoot. I think this is gonna be a pretty cool setup. Pretty cool setup. Let's see if anybody in the chat room has got any questions here. Uh, no, no 180 stream today. Yes, we had to give up something, and so we gave up the, the 180 low definition stream. Sorry about that, guys. 
that was our kind of our uh, our sacrifice to get things going today. I see Mike has joined us. Welcome, Mike. Glad to have you. Um, okay, so no questions so far. And USS Rover, I, I don't think I understand your comment. But anyway, okay, moving right along here. Um, whew, take a deep breath here. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is not our average show. <laughs> this is like, you know, I just got through changing. It's almost like I just got through changing a tire on the car and we're going to the prom. You know, it's 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 not the right it's not the right feel for it, um, but you get a, a feel for some of the throwing the things together at the last minute and seeing if they work. You know, if if I can do it, and I'm not the brightest bulb on the shelf, there's no doubt about that. If I can do it, you can do it. You can put the pieces together with with you know, some hints in the right direction, some good foundation. A lot of it has to do with good foundational understandings of how things work, how audio works, how video works. And a lot of it, especially since we've got so many different things that are plugging in together and expected to work together, and it can get really confusing sometimes, especially for me, it really helps when I think of it like a chain. And the chain's got to start somewhere, and it's got to end somewhere, and then it's got a bunch of links in between. And if the links are different sizes or different shapes or, or rusty or whatever the case may be, it's not going to be a good strong chain. But if you've got the same size links and they're all good and secure, it's going to be a good size chain. A good example of that is the video chain. When the video is coming from the camera at one resolution, but the capture card wants to capture it at a different resolution, but your software like vMix or VidBlaster is set for a third resolution and then you're going to stream a fourth resolution and record a fifth resolution. You're asking your computer to do all sorts of changing of resolutions and it's just going to go, no, <laughs> I can't. There's not enough of me to go around. But if you look in the broadcast environment, if you look at the way the professionals do it, they don't change. If they start at 1080, um, 60 frames a second interlaced, they do that all the way through. And so they're not asking any of their broadcast equipment to get into changing things around. You know, we've got so much flexibility with the devices that we can pick up. You know, you can pick up an easy cap for 35 bucks and you can plug your camera into it, but okay, boy, there's incompatibility right there because the camera may want to stream at a different resolution than the card can capture. And if you plug the card into your PC, then what do you, you know, what resolution is your software going to take? So you've got to sit down. In fact, I find it really helpful to map it out. Did I bring my, my notebook in? No, I didn't. I've got I've got several different maps that I've I've just drawn. Well, you know, it'll be a it's maps or pictures. It's got a picture of the laptop. And it'll have a little cable coming out to it to a camera. Uh, or to the, the, the capture box, and then a little cable going out to the camera. And, and I mark my resolutions and, my, and, and any other things that might be important so that I know what's what as it goes through the chain. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, I was up too late last night worrying about this stuff. And so that way I'm able to kind of keep track of it. And if there's a problem, I can go back and check and say, okay, are these links, did I make these links the way I drew them up? And then I find out, no, <laughs> I plug the audio, the, the audio speaker cable into the mic jack. That's not going to work. So uh, keeping it simple is a good way to make it work. And that's, I think, how I was able to get this done today. I, got, I guess I've got about two or three hours into putting all this together today. Let me give you another a little shot of it. And you can see, you can see my extra keyboard. This is a keyboard for my production PC. That's my production PC's monitor right here. And I'm, I'm monitoring chat in that. But I stole the, the other monitor from my production PC for the laptop. And it's plugged in right over here, uh, VGA. Let's go to the other side shot. You might be able to see a little bit more. Um, So we've got uh, we've got power cord, we've got VGA coming in from the second monitor, uh, firewire going out to the 
the box, the capture box is just out of view. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that camera, <laughs> excuse me, I couldn't get that camera kicked down enough to see the box, but basically it's got Firewire coming in and four video, four HDMI video ports coming out to each one of the four cameras. And then uh, I've got uh, audio in, audio out. And I could have done the audio USB, um, but I'm not always confident that that works the way I want it to work. With the Behringer line of mixers, um, the USB is not always controllable the way you would want it to be. And so, did I say Firewire? I meant Thunderbolt. Sorry about that if I said Firewire. I guess they are kind of the same root. Um, but the USB, uh, the, the way the mixer works USB, you don't have as much control over individual um, audio channels in that sense. Um, question coming up in the chat room, do, it, do you feel that the laptop monitor is cramped for vMix? Uh, and that's that's a great question. I really do appreciate that question. Let me uh, let me do something right here. Yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna put that back over here. This is the uh, I was able to. Can y'all see what I'm doing? No, you can't. Let me see. Let me shift to a different monitor. So we can do that. Yeah, there we go. Um, over here on the second screen, you can see moving around. This is the audio mixer from vMix and I've undocked it <clears throat> excuse me I've undocked it from vMix um, so that I could have more more space on the laptop monitor so uh, uh, Tommy I think I think your question is a really a, really a good one um, had I not had a second monitor yes I would have felt I, I would have felt cramped um, I would have had to pop windows up and down I've got I've got three different windows running over here on the second monitor. I like to keep an eye on the CPU usage. Um, I know we had uh, some uh, buffering earlier before we started the before we st started the actual broadcast, and I was able to track that down to some high CPU use. So I was able to figure out some ways to kind of cut down. Uh, one of the ways we cut down is we're not streaming our our normal 180. Um, Low dense in it, low density stream today that we normally stream for folks that are watching us on iPads and, and other devices. So my apologies to those of you that may have tried to watch like that. Um, it, uh, but I think that, again that the fact that I I can undock the the mixer part gives me a little bit more screen real estate here on the the laptop screen. Uh, it's another question. Do you have another USB to use the USB powered monitor? Actually, I do, and I had intended to do that. I've got the USB monitor over just out of, out of, <laughs> out of reach right now. And um, I think that's going to make a great portable setup because it will slip into the laptop with the, with the monitor. It's about the size of the, just the screen, and it has a stand built into it that kicks out kind of like a picture frame. And, and plugs in USB. Uh, it seems to work uh, better with USB 3, but I think it will work with USB 2. Then yeah, it, it, it really is a portable, portable setup. Um, what I also would like to see is whether that uh, USB monitor, if you can install more than one of those on the same laptop, because I've got um, one, two, three, four, I've got four USB ports um, so if I threw in a you know a hub to run the the mouse and a keyboard or something else like that, and then uh, could use it, the other two out of the other three available USB ports for monitors, I could have a three monitor setup. But uh, we'll be checking that as we have we have time and and <laughs> time and budget, <laughs> time and budget. It's all about the Benjamins, isn't it? You know, you got to be able to afford it. And, and, you know, the funny thing about it in doing this for a while and having spent, you know, bad money or throw, spent good money on bad stuff 
is how do you know until somebody's tried it and talked about it? I mean, we, we all know that you can read the reviews out there on the Internet, and those reviews sometimes can be helpful, but a lot of times they're just restating the manufacturer's information that was submitted to the reviewer. What's better is to have live situations, situations like this, where you're, you're putting products together and you're seeing how they work and do they do what you want them to do, um, or do they have the capacity possibly to do what you want them to do. So, oh, Tommy says, I've read that the USB monitor will work off a hub also. That's amazing. That would be amazing I mean, because video is just a huge signal. Um, will be interesting to see. I can try that because I've got a hub sitting here. Well, oh, here's another question. Would not running the, US, the 180p video stream only require less CPU usage? Um, we are not running the 180p stream today, and we picked up about 10% in our CPU usage by not running that. So we're, we're bumping between... Uh, let's see, 60, 61, 62, 61, 62, 63. Um, and we're recording 720 today instead of 1080, and we're streaming 720. Um, yeah, 58, 57. So, and actually, when we started this broadcast, it was actually up in the 80s, and I guess it's it's sort of calmed down a little bit. Let's see, I can switch cameras, and maybe that'll make it jump up a little bit. It may not like it. a lot of extra action on the vMix part. You just never know. Um, yeah, now it's jumping up a good bit. So you always want to leave, I think you always want to leave a lot of headroom. Um, you know, whenever I get above 75%, um, I'm a little nervous. Um, I know with uh, not my, not with this laptop and not with my current production machine, but with the production machine before that, that I sort of cannibalized to make the next production machine, um, I had audio problems whenever I jumped over 75%. I would just have dropped dropped frames, I guess, and with that would be a little a little click in the audio. Uh, oh, I see. Here's the question. Would not would uh, would running a 180p video stream require less CPU usage than a 720p? Oh, no doubt. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 180 would be next to nothing. Oh, well, you know, 180 would be 10%. And let's see if we can see what FFmpeg is doing in the background right now. Um, well, it's doing 15% for 720. And then about 8% to record 720. For some reason, that, that 180p stream was just putting me over the edge today. Well, you know what? We can try it. We can we can add it right now. Um, or can we? No, I'd have to reconfigure because I don't have the module already active, and I'd have to reset it. My bad. Okay. Well, we've gone a little over time, but that's okay because we started late. <laughs> we made up for it. So, by way of recap, we took a um, an Asus ROG. Uh, laptop, what is the model number on this beast? I'll have to put that in the show notes on the, the uh, YouTube on the YouTube note. Um, it's a 751 with some letters after it and before it. The um, we, we've got that. We've got it connected firewire to this uh, to this video capture box that has four ports of HDMI video. 1080p, four cameras connected, connected to a mixer, uh, connected to a second monitor, and having a pretty decent broadcast. Um, I'm wondering, we had, we had some, again, we had some um, buffering, <laughs> that's the word. We had some buffering earlier, and I haven't seen anybody mention it since then, so I guess we, we've got that fixed. So it's possible. It's possible. This would be pretty cool. 
All right, guys, there, that's the ticket right there. That's the ticket. Those folks that are, are around uh, watching live hang out because Dave has got uh, some snacks for us all, and we'll, uh, we'll hang out and chat a little bit. If you're watching us on YouTube, come join us one afternoon um, live because it's, it, it really is a lot of fun. And uh, these guys are, are, are funny, definitely. <laughs> They're funny looking, it's what they are. No, I'm just teasing. Um, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to come in, and, and there's great conversation and good camaraderie and folks sharing information back and forth while I'm trying to talk. So it's kind of like the teacher, you know, that thing. But it's been a treat to be with you. Please subscribe if you're a YouTube uh, guy. If... Um, Oh yeah, L uh, let me give a shout out for our our Eastern Shore Broadcasting page on Facebook. That's been getting a lot of attention lately, and a lot of times I'll I'll post just notes there on the Facebook. So uh, take a look at that Eastern Shore Broadcasting on Facebook. Yep, that's about it. That's about it. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. <laughs>